This episode brought to you by Noble Gold. Check out this free coin offer for my viewers. Now, inflation isn't something that we've heard of in a while, is it? But last month, the inflation rate in the US had the highest rise in the last 29 years. You heard me right, the last 29 years. Noble Gold specializes in retirement planning and IRAs, so their team of experts is your first step. This month, they're offering a one ounce American Eagle solid silver proof coin with every IRA or 401k taken out. Visit our website at noblegoldinvestments.com or just click the link in the description or pinned comment. We have confirmation that Joe Biden lied. Joe Biden made three claims about um, knowing you know that this would happen and, and some other things and they all the, the the generals all confirmed it that yes he was not correct about that of course they beat around the bush about it they wouldn't just outright admit it thank you madam chair gentlemen this committee recognizes that your constitutional duty is to follow the lawful orders of the president or resign if you don't agree with his decisions and policies like secretary mattis did but I want to emphasize, you do not have a duty, constitutional or otherwise, to cover for the commander in chief when he is not telling the truth to the American people. With that, I have a few questions that I'd like you to keep short, concise answers to. On August 18th, in a media interview to the American people, the president said that none of his military advisors told him that he should keep U.S. forces in Afghanistan. General Milley. That was a false statement by the President of the United States, was it not? I didn't even see the statement, to tell you the truth. I'm reading you a truthful statement. Um, that, was, that was a false statement. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, look at. Look, I, I don't have a lot of time. Okay, was that okay. a false statement to the American I, I'm people I'm not gonna categorize not? a statement of the President of the United States. Your top military advisors warned against withdrawing on this timeline. They wanted you to keep about 2,500 troops. No, they didn't. It was split. That, that, that wasn't true. That wasn't true. They didn't tell you that they wanted troops to stay? No. No one told your military advisors did not tell you, no, we should just keep 2,500 troops. It's been a stable situation for the last several years. We can do that. We can continue to do that. No, no one said that to me that I can recall. General McKenzie, was that a false statement? The, pre the president said none of his commanders said that he should keep troops in Afghanistan. Was that a false statement by the president of the United States? Uh Remember, you do not have a duty to cover for the president when he's not telling the truth. Was that a false statement I've or not? You, I've given you my opinion on the matter. I've given you my judgment on it. And I'll, I I'll think leave. we all know it was a false statement, okay? That's number one. President also said if there's an American citizen left behind in Afghanistan, the military is, not, is going to stay until we get them out. General Milley, was that statement, did that statement turn out to be true or untrue by the president? I think that was the intent, but we gave him a recommendation on the 25th of August to terminate the mission on the 31st of August. The statement was untrue. Let me make another, um, let me ask another question. General Milley, General McKinsey, the president around the same time said, quote, Al-Qaeda was gone from Afghanistan, told the American people that. Was that true or not true? Was Al-Qaeda gone from Afghanistan in mid-August? True or not true? Al-Qaeda is still in Afghanistan. They were there in mid-August. Uh, they have been severely uh, disrupted and attrited over many, many years. They are not. So it wasn't true. General McKenzie, was that true or not? Al Qaeda was present in Afghanistan. Okay, so it wasn't true. Let me, let me make one final one. The president called this entire retrograde operation an extraordinary success. General Miller, in his testimony, disagreed with that assertion. General Milley, was this Afghanistan retrograde operation an extraordinary success? There's, there's two operations, Senator. Just yes or no. I, I have a lot of uh, it, questions. It, it, Was this an extraordinary this, success? I think, here's the problem. I think the whole world knows. This is the cover of the Economist magazine. Biden's debacle. That had stories in it, articles in it, called the fiasco in Afghanistan is a huge and unnecessary blow to America's standing. That was one article. Joe Biden blames everybody else. That's another article. China sees America humbled. That's another article. And gentlemen, the problem here, these are not marginal misstatements by the president to the American people. These are dramatic, obvious falsehoods that go to the very heart of the foreign policy fiasco we have all witnessed. These are life and death deceptions that the president of the United States told the American people. I have one final question. I might leave it because it's a long one for the follow-up, but here's 
Here's the anger. I've never seen my constituents more angry about an issue than this. And it's the combination of everybody knowing that this is a debacle, and yet people defending it as a, quote, extraordinary success. And here's the biggest. No accountability. No accountability. You gentlemen have spent your lives, and I completely respect it, troops in combat, you've been in combat, you've had troops under your command killed in action. You have been part of an institution where accountability is so critical, and the American people respect that. Up and down the chain, where there are instances, commanders get relieved. Up and down the chain, we see it. The McCain incident, the Fitzgerald incident, the AAV incident with the Marine Corps, three-star, four-star flag officers, all relieved of duty. But on this matter, on the biggest national security fiasco in a generation, there has been zero accountability, no responsibility from anybody. So I will ask this final question of all of you. Senator Cotton talked Senator about Sullivan. it. Madam, if could, I, Madam Chair, if I may the, this, Could you submit your question for I, the I, record, please? We're trying to keep to a five-minute questioning round. You can ask the question in your second round if you'd like. Lied multiple times. He lied, and uh, I'll put a little article up here. We already knew that, okay? There, uh, the the Washington Post actually got a, a memo, um, a secret memo, and it says here a confidential trove of government documents obtained by the Washington Post reveals that the senior. Uh, U.S. officials failed to tell the truth about the war in Afghanistan throughout the 18-year campaign, making rosy pronouncements that they knew to be false, hiding mis uh, unmistakable evidence that the war had become unwinnable. Okay, well, I don't know about winning the war or whatever. I mean, we pretty much had won the war. It had come to, like, uh, a point where the Taliban... We, we went almost two years there with no casualties. So I'd say that means we won the war. I mean... What we do after that, you know, we you know we pull out. We don't leave everybody there, but we got to leave some kind of a footprint so that we can keep from happening what happened before, or else the entire twenty-year mission is for nothing, which is what happened. And now we're right back in the situation that we were in before, except for now, we have, like I was saying earlier, we uh, we look weak because we weren't you know uh, asserting ourselves there and making new deals with the Taliban. So we look weak. Uh, we pulled out. Uh, leaving the Taliban, Al Qaeda, and ISIS all with an amazing propaganda victory, and they, you know they sit there and they say, "Oh, we don't know what the Taliban's relationship is going to be. It's going to be just like it was before." I mean, they might fight and stuff, but ultimately they have a main, they have a common enemy, and that's us. And that's going to probably bring them together in some some form. And you can guarantee there's going to be attacks on the American homeland. It's, there's no doubt about that. And this goes back to. And especially Lloyd Austin. Lloyd Austin was the was the uh, second highest ranking member, second highest ranking uh, commander in in Iraq. So um, he's the second highest ranking commander in Iraq. We leave Iraq under the Obama administration. What happens? Exactly what you could have predicted happened. I made a video, you know, back in two thousand and seven or two thousand eight, something like that, predicting exactly what happened and. I was basing that prediction on what happened in Somalia, because what happened in Somalia? We went in there, we fought Al Qaeda, we left with our tail between our legs, and it was a major propaganda victory that Osama used, called us a paper tiger, launched multiple attacks on the World Trade Center. So it's like we know what's going to happen. And so you have Lloyd, Secretary uh, of Defense Lloyd, uh, uh, whatever his name is, <laughs> Austin, and he's sitting here, oh, well, we have lessons to learn in Lessons to learn. You should have already learned that lesson. What happened in Iraq when we left? Well, the exact same thing. Uh, I, ISIS rolled through, rolled right over the Iraqi army at first, uh, got a ton of our equipment, and then rampaged across uh, Iraq and, and other countries, into Syria and, and, and the entire Middle East. And so then you come to leaving Afghanistan. It's like they weren't prepared for that at all. He admitted, uh, Miley or all of them admitted, that one of the scenarios, they did not... Uh, uh, do a war games, a tabletop war game scenario of the Afghan military falling immediately. 17 days is when I, they didn't have that scenario. I, I'm baffled by that. How can me? How can I? I'm just some schlub on the internet, and I know I'm not alone. How can we predict that that's exactly what's going to happen? But they don't know. <laughs> it's strange credul credulity. Like that—that that is unbelievable. 
This is a failure. They are failures. They should not be holding their positions. Lloyd Austin especially, because he's already been through this once and then does the exact same thing again. Uh, uh, another point, uh, at one point Miley was asked what, you know, what he thought of the claims in these books that had just come out. That's the reason he, one of the reasons he's there testifying um, because these, you know, these claims about him warning China and all this. Uh, he says he hasn't read the book to, to be able to tell at this hearing that he's known about it was coming. He hasn't read the book to know if they were accurate claims. I, it, it just like it, to me, this seems like a, a guy who's a liar and he just lies about everything. Like, I cannot believe that you're you're going to be on this, you know, this hearing that the whole nation's going to see and you don't read the book or like at least read the segment that's talking about what the reason you're going to be here testifying. I don't believe it. Like, he just said that so he wouldn't have to respond to it.